Good morning all. This is Sue Chemnitz coming to you live on Facebook this morning. I am excited to be here and to paint with you and this is our, our first little painting adventure and I as you if you don't know me I love to paint. It's probably one of my favorite things to do so um, so let's get started because I don't want to take too much of your time. This is, we're going to be doing something similar to this this morning. Um, not exactly the same. I've changed the colors just a little bit, but you can get the gist of it while, while we're painting. So um, I'll set that over to the side. So the first thing I did, I want to tell you about, is I coated this in gesso. And that just, it, it puts a layer on top of the paper so that the paper won't lift up, hopefully. We'll find out for sure later on. And this is kind of gesso that I use, this clear gesso by Liquitex. You can probably use just about any kind. The gesso that is not clear is white, and it will stay white. So they both look the same going on, but the clear dries clear, the white dries white, which might seem obvious unless you don't know and you're used to um, Mod Podge, for instance. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put a background layer on. And so I'm going to use some of my favorite colors, some yellow. I like painting with my fingers sometimes, so I'm going to be, that's kind of what I'm going to do this morning, especially with this technique. I'm going to put just a little bit of yellow, some pink, light magenta this is called. I'm not advocating necessarily any brand. I do like the golden and I do like the Blick acrylic, but um, you know, it's kind of up to you and maybe a little bit of what you have on hand too. I do use a lot of these uh, little, you can get like Americana at Hobby Lobby or these at Blick. Um, they're a more fluid, they're called a fluid acrylic and they're not as pigmented, so you have to use more. And you know what, I am going to put a little bit of white with this yellow because this yellow always feels really heavy to me. So I am just going to spread this around with my fingers. These little pencil lines, as you see, you'll get the just down below. I do like to sometimes, I actually I mostly tape my my paper down and actually I'll show you the paper kind of paper that I'm using in just a minute so that's looking a little I didn't finish that sentence sorry sometimes I don't finish my sentence up here in the corner you can't see it I have my little yogurt container full of water and I'm washing my hands off in between so and I have a towel here too So what I have, I'm going to add a little more white in the corners. I like white. White's a big color for me. And I like leaving white in these pieces. I don't all the time. Lots of times I work on black canvases for my, uh, what I'm calling right now, wine flights. So I'm going to add a little more, a little more white. Just a little bit of interest in that background back there. There you go. Washing off my hands because I get super messy. Uh, I promised I'd show you the paper that I'm using. You don't have to use this paper, but uh, I really like this. You can get it either by Strathmore or Canson, but it's a it's a smooth surface. Um, I cut it down. I usually get 11 by 14, and I cut it down. And this is actually called the 300 series. I don't know. It says that up above, but I don't know that I can get that on my camera. It says it way up at the top. It's a little bit heavier paper. Um, and so it, it it will maintain its shape a little bit better. Now, here's the magic part. Um, it works, this works best. I've tried it several times. Um, and this works best when this layer is super, super dry. So, and by super dry, I mean probably overnight. And it doesn't have to be. It just has a little different character and a little different feel if it's not. So, you know when you watch those kitchen shows, how they put one pan in the oven and the other one comes out? Well, that's what we're doing. We're putting this one to the side so that it can dry. Now, oh, look, there's a dry one right beside it, right underneath it, actually. 
Uh, remember before I said that I sometimes tape them down? I think that's from my watercolor days and it just makes me feel a little bit, a little bit better. So for the, it keeps my paper a little bit flatter. And what I'm trying to do here is a postcard to send to a friend. Uh, what I titled this was Love on Your Friend Postcard. And and um, I want to send this to a friend in the mail. Now, being a square size, I think will jump out at them on their in their mailbox. It does require more postage at the post office. But since I think sending something and paying 40 or 50 cents to send something through the mail is a great deal, um, that doesn't bother me at all. So uh, that's what that's what the end result will be. Now I'm going to take some blue because my flowers are going to be blue on this one. So this is dry. I did this last night in preparation for you all. The stencils that I'm using this morning, I'm using them as kind of a mask, and they are um, stencils that I actually cut myself. Well, not cut with a razor blade. I borrowed my good friend Deb's machine and cut them out of vinyl on there. And <laughs> You know, do you ever do things in your life where it's like, okay, I just saved, um, I just saved like five dollars because I didn't buy one, but I just spent all day doing it. Yeah, that's sometimes how, sometimes it goes for me. I have some white here that I'm going to put over, over here on my flower. Here are my stencils up here. I'm going to do that one there and this one down here. And what I do is I put that right on here. And then this is a baby wipe, one of those, um, yeah, you just, it's by Huggies actually, that's my favorite brand. Isn't that funny? I'm sure the rest of them are just fine too, it's just what I started using. And I think I did pick up another brand one day and it was uh, super super wet so there that's it that's all you do and I picked that up oh look at that cute little flower here's another this is too much the same size so I'm going to go down a size Again, you just lay that on there, and you can't let this layer get very dry or you will never get that acrylic paint off, or you'll be scraping off the, um, you'll be scraping off the other paint and the paper, probably. And it doesn't have to be perfectly clean around it. I, I, um, yeah, so we'll just set this little guy over to the side, and we'll peel this off. There's my other flower, yay. Okay, I do think I'm going to put just a little, um, sorry, thinking, I'm thinking while I'm doing this. I'm going to run, I don't know if you can see this, yes you can. Hello everybody that's out there that's watching me, I'm thrilled that you're, that you've tuned in. I like sharing my little tips and techniques. So this has just been a really fun adventure on Facebook. Why isn't this working for me? All right, so let's see here. I do have a hard time watching comments fly by and stuff. Not that any of you are commenting, but you know, it's hard to work and watch the camera at the same time. So that probably isn't going to happen. I think my daughter is trying to field some, and I don't know if Randy made it back from his men's group to field some too. So did you? See, this is just a cosmetic sponge. Now I don't want to get it into my flower, but I do want to just get a little bit of paint on it over here. What I'm doing over on this side is I'm actually creating a little darker border <clears throat> over here and I did decide to go over my flower just a little bit. Okay, how does that look? Yeah, I like that. I do like that. I'm going to rinse this off a little bit. I'm going to put a little more green on. And the 
this is what I'm going to do with the green. I, I'm going to wipe off this sponge after I said it doesn't, so it's not totally filled with water. I'm going to bring a little green down here. Then one of the things I like to do is kind of lost and found edges, which is happening there quite nicely. So I'm going to try and lift. I usually do that with a baby wipe too, but that's what I had handy this morning, so that's what I used. All right, that part is actually pretty much done for me. I'll come in and do a little bit of bordering, a little bit of borders um, in just a few minutes. But the next thing I am going to do is glue on some words. So this one that I did ahead of time, I already did two of these, so I was tired of these words by this time. You put joy in my heart, I thought was kind of a clever little thing. Um, I couldn't decide between these two. Um, thanks. Thanks for being you, or I delight in you. Um, and God says that actually in Psalm 16, which I happen to be reading this morning. Um, he says it in several other places, too. And I'm kind of, what I did was I printed these out on tracing paper. This is not the best quality tracing paper. This is some cheap stuff that I got at the grocery store. My nice stuff um, I just don't have here right at the moment. So what do you think? Thanks for being you, or I delight in you. Hmm. I know, I take way too long to decide. I think I'm going to do thanks for being you. And I am just going to rip it a little bit. I'm going to rip it out because I don't want it to be a really straight edge. I hope that's not too loud on the camera. Sorry if it is. Sorry, but not too sorry, because, you know, that's part of the creative process is just experimenting with stuff. Now, on this one, I actually tore out each, each line. This one, just because of time on Facebook Live. And being honoring of your time, too, I'm just going to... Um, to keep it all together like that. And I did go on my computer and do some fun things with the fonts and stuff, but you don't have to do that. You can just take a pen. For Pete's sakes, you can take a pen and just jot right on there, and I like doing that too because that might, I don't know if that feels more special or not. I don't know. All right, so there we go. I'm going to put that right there. Thanks for being you. I'm going to take this um, I used to always use a Liquitex matte medium, and I found because I was having trouble with some of the glue sticking. But this Elmer's Extreme School Glue Stick it has to be permanent. This seems to work really, really well. So I will. Now you have to be careful because your inkjet will, your inkjet ink will smear. So, I am um, actually going to take a little piece of, well, I can just take some of this, and I'm going to rub that with my finger instead of right on top of the inkjet, and I'll go over that with some glaze after I'm done and off camera just to preserve it through the mail. I'm always a little nervous at what happens once those post office people get a hold of it. So this needs a little more glue here. I'll just put it right down here. It'll be easier, huh? All right, and that is it for putting those letters on. And then... I am going to put a border on just because, just because I like that. And I have that all prepared. This is 
off of this border set that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby for half off. So that was pretty exciting. I've been trying not to buy too much and just, you know, oh gosh, I have so many art supplies. So I try not to buy too much. You have to make sure that you use permanent ink, would be my pigmented ink it's called, on the stamp pad. And what I did, this is just a little plastic strip. I didn't know this at first and I emailed the artist, hey, how do I work with that? That's kind of silly. Then I went on YouTube and found out how. So we all start somewhere. That's my, that is what I would say to you. So I just heard Jessica and the dog in there. They're being kind of quiet today. And I put this here because I don't really want my border to go over the white part. I'm going to line that up on my tape. And I'm going to put some across the top too. Again, I'm going to just make it so that it doesn't go in the white part. I'm not sure how long that is. I can have it go off the edge there. Okay, so I'm going to re-stamp it. My last step um, is I'm going to take these pastel markers. I love white. I love having some black in the background. Orange and pink. Those are all of my favorites. And I'll get some white. So here. I'm going to actually um, put some white down there so that the, when I put the orange on top, <clears throat> it'll show up. can't quite see where those are in there, but we'll take a guess. It just shows up better. If you have, that's just, it's kind of just a piddly thing that I do, but that's okay. And I'm going to go in and doodle around some of these. Don't want to use too much black because I never like it when I have a lot of black. I'm going to color in a couple of these because I just think that would be fun. colors to outline were orange, but I have blue flowers. So, huh. This is my favorite part, I'll be honest with you, if I could just scribble. Well, I do it. I love to paint. I shouldn't say that. Who would believe that I didn't like that part? Nobody. that makes it kind of dark so then I let go over everything with white and again I need to sometimes make sure that's working properly fix up everything I'll glue that on later glue that back on
And this is just about a wrap. Thanks for coming and joining me this morning. I'll show you how it looks. This is one of the fun things I like about doing the tape thing. Remember at the beginning how, see that one bleeds off the edge, goes off the edge there. See, that's probably dry enough to work on now. I have this pretty little border. I may or may not keep that on for the post office. And I'm going to do one more thing just because I want to be done with it, uh, um, like right now. So I'm going to take a piece of tape, not that piece of tape, obviously. Get that kind of even. And you know what? Oh, I hope that's dry enough to have turned over there. Oh. I'm going to put this underneath because it will come off better off of the tracing paper if it's just still a little bit wet. And I'm going to make this side a little bit special for them too. Okay, there's no gesso on this side. So we'll just see how that comes off. Oh, that was way too much white. This will be like a good little review. But I am going to do it a little bit differently on this side. Okay, try, 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 try. Washing off my hands. All right, one more flower so that they'll get a nice surprise on this side too. And what I'm going to do on this side, because it's, you know, for a little friend here. This might lift up some of the paper you're going to see. Yep, see, now you know why the gesso is important. But you know what, that's okay. I actually brought a little paintbrush in here. And I'm just going to touch that up. That's it. I could go around and do that whole thing, but that would be silly, wouldn't it? I'm just going to leave it very vague like that because it'll be perfect when it dries for writing over. And I'm because this side says thank you, thanks for being you. This side is actually going to um, say what I like about them. That's my that's my goal. I'm going to do one more thing on this side. I'm going to just put a little shadowing behind here and behind here. And I'm going to try not to mess up the back. being you. That's my little love on your friend postcard. I'll be sending, I like I said, I'm going to put a <clears throat> coat of glaze, this acrylic glazing on the top, especially, I'm going to especially do it right there so that that doesn't smear off it if that card gets caught in the rain. And here is this side. Peel that off and then I'll, I'll write the name and address over here, put a stamp on it, write some personal stuff here and pop it in the mail. And that is it. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. 
Uh, I do post every weekend on my blog on SueChemnitz.com. You can sign up for the blog. I would just be tickled pink if you would do that. And until next time, we'll be traveling and, and with um, family on Monday. So I won't be here on Monday, but the Monday after I'll be back. So love you guys. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, share the video later on if you would. That'd be great. Hugs.